Hi, it's summer and this is day one of the X's and O's readathon. I'm so excited that this is finally here. I've been looking forward to this for months now. My friend Jesse from Reading with Jess is hosting this readathon and I'm co-hosting along with Lauren from Lauren Love Reads, Lena from Lena's Bookshelf, and Gwen from Gwendolyn Kensinger on YouTube and Lavender Mud on Instagram. As you can probably tell by my voice, I'm getting over a cold, so <laughs> try to ignore it as much as you can. Before I get into my TBR and tell you about what I'm going to be reading this week, um, I wanted to talk to you about my coffee really quick. You saw me making it in an earlier clip, but uh, the coffee was provided for me by the company Javi. They reached out to me and sent me a free bottle in exchange for an honest review. This is a month supply at 30 servings and it's coffee concentrate, which I'd never heard of before this company. You put a teaspoon of this into water or milk or whatever, however you make your coffee. You can make it hot or cold. They even have like cooking recipes that you can use this in. And then you just stir it up and it's like ready to go. I think it's like the easiest way I've ever made coffee. <laughs> I really liked their company because they're ethically and sustainably sourced, they're dairy and sugar free, there's no GMOs, I love their packaging, they just sound like a really cool company, I like what they stand for, and honestly it's really good coffee too. I feel like sometimes when I make coffee it just like tastes really watered down, it's just really rich and tastes really good, and honestly it's a lot better than the coffee that I usually make at home. I feel like most of us bookish people like coffee, so I thought this would be kind of a fun like sponsored content, I don't know if it's sponsored, but you know what I'm saying, like getting a free product and stuff to review. I was also just really excited because that's the first time that a company's reached out to me about something like this. I have a link in the description that if you click on it, it'll take you to their website and automatically apply 20% off of your order. But you could also use the code SUMMER91801 at checkout. Now to tell you about the books that I'm going to be reading this week. I'm going to be continuing my reread of The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I started this like literally a month ago for the New Year New Reads readathon. This is my favorite book. I'm doing a reread. This is only the second time that I've read it. I'm having a really fun time. The first time that I read it, I listened to it mostly on audio, but this time I really want to completely read it physically. I'm kind of annotating it a little bit. It is a bigger book, so it's taking me a long time. Right now I'm on page 179. I'm on team O for this readathon, so is Gwen, and one of our prompts is to read a book with friends to lovers, and I'm kind of stretching to fit this book into that category. There is a smaller kind of romance in this book. It's definitely not like one of the main plot points. And they're definitely not like enemies to lovers, so I'm counting it as friends to lovers. <laughs> but if you want to read a book specifically for that trope, this isn't that book. <laughs> this is about a college student named Zachary, and he one day when he's in his university library finds a book that has an experience from his own life written in the pages alongside all of these other like really fantastical stories. So he's just trying to track down where this book came from, who wrote about him, like how this is even happening. It's a book about books. It's definitely written for book lovers. There are also books within this book that you get to kind of read from, and that's one of my favorite parts about it. So I'm going to be continuing in this one. One of the other challenges is to read a book with pink on the cover, so for this I'm reading X's and O's by Amy Lee. This is the second book in her Influencer series. I just barely read the first one, which is called Set on You, a couple of weeks ago, and I loved it so much. So this is the second book after that one, and it follows the sister of the main character, Crystal, in that first one. You don't have to have read the first one to understand and enjoy this one, but I definitely think it's worth reading. So even if you decide to read it after reading this one, I totally think you should. I loved the conversations that were in it and it was just a really cute romance. I actually cheated and already started this one on audio yesterday. This one is about romance book connoisseur Tara. She has a book talk and a bookstagram, so I'm already relating to her so much. She's a nurse for her day job though, and she recently is kind of starting over again after being broken up with by her fiance. Her new roommate is named Trevor, he's a firefighter. You kind of hear about him a little bit in the first book. Well, you hear about both of them a little bit in the first book. I would definitely say that this is Friends to Lovers because there's definitely like some attraction going on there, but their relationship is solely like friendship when it, this book is starting out. She decides that she wants to try and get her like perfect meet cute romance, and so she's going to try and reconnect with 10 of her previous exes to try to like rekindle a spark there, and Trevor is helping her. They're very much like opposite its attract as well because Trevor is very like clean and organized. He's definitely not into relationships or romance. He's pretty much just like a one night stand kind of guy. He doesn't want commitment and then Tara is very much like loves love, loves romance. She's messy. <laughs> so it's kind of fun to see their personalities and how they live together and stuff. I don't remember how far I made it into this, probably not very far but I'm loving it so far, I'm going to keep reading it today. And then the other book that I'm going to be reading, I'm reading on my Kindle. I was going to show you the cover on my Kindle, but 
it's dead, so I need to charge it. <laughs> But it's My Soul is a River by Nikita Gill. It's a collection of poetry. I don't really know too much about it, but it's been on my TBR for a really long time. And it fits the challenge to have an O's conversation heart word in the title. One of the O conversation heart words is soulmate. So my soul is a river or your soul is a river. So those are my reading plans for this week. I'm glad that I've already started in on two of them and that one of them is short. I think it'll work out really well for a readathon. <laughs> I still need to take the Instagram picture for today. I'm pretty sure the prompt is to post your TBR stack with um, your team color. So I'm wearing my team color today, which is pink. So I need to take a picture of my outfit holding my book stack. But first I have to do a grocery pickup. So I'm gonna take the picture when I get back. I just got home from the grocery pickup and I took the picture for Instagram. This is how it turned out. While I was driving, I listened to more of X's and O's and I made it to chapter 11, which is 30% of the way through this. So I'm that far through right now. I'm still really liking it. She just barely got done with her second date with one of her exes. She made Trevor go on this one with her and like sit away from them so that he could like help her if she needed it. The guy on this date was her like the one that got away from back in college. And she just wanted it to work out so badly that she was kind of like lying about the things that she was interested in. And so I think she's just kind of like missing the point. I think she just wants to be in a relationship so badly that she's kind of like sacrificing the things that she wants in a relationship. So I'm just really excited for her to finally realize that Trevor is the one that she needs to be with. I also came home to an exciting package in the mail. My friend Sandra got me this squish for my birthday. I'm literally so obsessed with it. It's a little lemon macaroon. Her name is Landry. I'm renaming her Lemon and I love her little leaf up here. Anyway, I'm just obsessed with her. I know Sandra's probably watching, so thank you so much. I'm so glad that we've been able to become friends and I love that we talk almost every day, mainly about Squishmallows. So thank you so much, Sandra. I just love this. This was like the sweetest surprise. Also, she told me that her daughter helped pick this one out. So also thank you to Sandra's daughter. Very good choice. Sandra also gave me a book recommendation, just barely. It's for this book called The Pisces which I have seen around before, but I just never added it to my TBR, I don't think. But she said it's super interesting and different, which are definitely buzzwords for me. She says it has a merman in it, and she thinks that I'll really like it. So I'm definitely picking that one up soon. Also today, BK Borison um, announced the name for her new book. It's called Business Casual, and it's about a financial bro and a tattoo artist. And I'm literally so excited for it to be published. <laughs> right now I'm making dinner. So I think I'm gonna keep listening to X's and O's while I do that. And then in about an hour, we're gonna be doing the live show. We're kicking off the readathon with some reading sprints and some games and stuff. I'm so excited for the games that Jesse has planned. And I don't know for sure which book I'm going to pick up during reading sprints. I'm kind of thinking I might do X's and O's just because it's the buddy read and I want to make sure that I finish it. And even though I do have the audiobook for it, I do want to physically read some of it because I bought the book. <laughs> I almost forgot that I wanted to show you this. It's Dr. Pepper Strawberries and Cream. And this can is like so <laughs> my aesthetic. <laughs> I figured it's perfect for this readathon because it has pink on it and it also has red, I guess, too. But Dr. Pepper is my favorite drink and my cousin showed me this and I was like, I have to get that in this grocery pickup. I haven't tried it yet, so I thought I'd try it with you guys really quick just for fun. That is so good. Okay, um, this is definitely gonna be my new hyperfixation drink. I'm obsessed with this. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to buy like a million cases of this just in case they like take it away. If you're a fan of Dr. Pepper, you definitely need to go try this. It's so good. Anyway, now I'm gonna finish making dinner and keep reading. <laughs>
happy day two of the readathon. So far today, I've listened to a little bit more of this on audio. I'm a little over halfway through the book. I got a good ways through this um, on the reading sprints last night. I do not like all of the like pop culture references that are in this book. There were still some in Set On You, the first one in the series, but not as many as this one. There was one point where they were talking about like celebrity crushes and Tara says that one of her celebrity crushes is Dwight Schrute from The Office. Dwight is one of my favorite characters ever, but is he a celebrity crush? Absolutely not. <laughs> and she says that his dedication to Angela is what's most attractive about him. I don't understand this girl. Also, she is just like so over the top, which I understand is how her character is supposed to be. A lot of her exes broke up with her because they said she was crazy and too intense in their relationship, that she was a stage five clinger. <laughs> like there's no gray area with her. It's like all or nothing. She's almost reminding me a little bit of Jess from New Girl. And I love Jess from New Girl but it's not working for me in this book. There's also a scene that happened earlier on in this that I forgot to mention when I first was talking about this book. It's like the first day that she's moving into the apartment with Trevor and something happens. She ends up locking herself in the bathroom and Trevor is like feeding her Cheetos, like, like passing them to her around the door. And I just thought it was really funny and cute. But yeah, the main character is a little bit much. She's very intense. <laughs> I'm not relating to her at all but that's fine. There hasn't been very much spice though, so I'm really looking forward to having some spicy scenes happen. I think that I'm really just ready for things to start happening between her and Trevor. I think right now, if I had to rate it, it would be either a three and a half or four. So we'll see if the second half of this book changes that rating for me at all. So other than reading more of the book today, I also took the bookstagram picture for today, which was to show your bookish valentine or galentine and we were leaving this pretty open for people a lot of people have been posting pictures of their actual valentine like their husband or boyfriend i've seen a couple people post like their cats as their valentine and we said like you could post like your favorite friend group or your favorite girl group and stuff or you could just do your bookish crush i kind of did a little bit of a mix you've already seen how my picture turned out so you already know my bookish crushes and stuff but i have this print of the inner circle from a court of mist and fury I've never really ordered fan art, but I ordered this like immediately after finishing Akamath for the first time back in like 2016 or something. At the time, this was like one of the only good pieces of fan art and I still really like it. The inner circle is just like one of my favorite friend groups and there's also a bunch of my bookish crushes in this group too. So I felt like it worked perfectly for the prompt today. So I posted this with A Court of Silver Flames and Akamath. I also used this mug in the picture. It's like kind of purpley and watercolory and has like a gold foil constellations on it. I feel like it really fits the vibe. I also didn't feel like having coffee today and I didn't just want to like make a cup of coffee for the sake of a picture. So I put Diet Dr. Pepper in it instead. <laughs> it kind of just looks like black coffee though if you're not paying too close of attention. So I think it worked out just fine. And then after all of that, we made homemade pizza for lunch. And that brings us to now. In about 30 minutes, we're gonna be watching um, our readathon movie, which is Look Both Ways. It's on Netflix. So we're all gonna press play at the same time and talk about it on Discord. And I figured in the 30 minutes leading up to us watching the movie, I'm gonna start working on a craft and maybe listen to more of the audiobook. So for my kind of like crafty thing that I'm doing, I've been slowly thrifting all of these like small picture frames. I want to collect more that are like kind of different sizes than these ones, but I spray painted all of them black the other day as my kind of like first step. And then I have this gold rub and buff and it's in the color antique gold. And I'm going to add some gold to all of these to make them look a little bit more like antiqued and stuff. And that's why I added the black spray paint was to give them like some depth and make them look a little bit more like vintagey. And then I'm going to put pictures in them, put magnets on the back and they're gonna go on my fridge. I got the idea from a TikTok and it just looked super cool. So I thought it would be fun. Plus these are like super cheap when you're thrifting and stuff. So yeah, I've never used Rub and Buff before, but I'm very excited to be using this. This is like one of the core items that you need when you're a DIYer and I finally have it. So I'm very excited <laughs> to start using it.
happy day four of the readathon. I did film a talking clip yesterday, but I hated it, <laughs> so I'm just gonna redo it today. It's been a very slow and chill day today so far, which honestly goes perfectly with the prompt for today. <laughs> the Instagram photo prompt for today is to share how you do self-care. I was thinking about taking a picture like kind of by my bathtub and stuff because that's one of the other ways that I practice self-care, but I thought for the picture I would just share some things on my bed. I included Squishmallows, crystals, my film camera, a couple records, some cozy books, my iPad with Procreate open because I like to draw. I also included a print of one of my illustrations in it too. And then I also put some clips and like hair accessories in it because usually on lazy days like this and like self-care days, I do not want my hair in my face. <laughs> Plus I just thought they looked cute in the picture. So I thought since today we're sharing how we do self-care and it's already been just like a chill day so far, I'm just going to embrace it and just make it a little bit of a self-care day. Before that though, I took lunch to Travis at work and dropped off um, a book that I sold on Pango. So the only other thing that I might do today that's productive is do a couple loads of laundry, but that might not even get done. <laughs> so I think for the next couple of hours until the reading sprints on Jesse's channel, I'm going to get cozy in my bed and maybe like get a drink and a treat and read a little bit. I don't feel like I've really like read that much this week. I mean, we're already on day four and I've only finished one book and I don't really feel like I've sat down to read physically very often. So I just want to do more of that. Speaking of finishing one book though, yesterday I did finish X's and O's. I think this one for me is going to be either like a three or a three and a half. I definitely liked Set On You Better, but this one was still really cute. The problems that I had with this one are still the same as what I've already said. The excessive pop culture references and also just the main character just being so intense. There were a couple of spicy scenes that I felt like were done really well. It had some dirty talk in it. It was a fun time. I thought it was really sweet that Trevor paid attention to the things that Tara liked. There were like multiple times where he would go out somewhere and come back and have like treats for her. Like he'd get her a bag of Cheetos or something. There were definitely like some really cute moments in this. I think the fact that I like set on you better than this and that I already had some issues with this, it's gonna make it probably a three. I also don't know how memorable it's going to be. It's just felt like I've been hanging out all week with a bunch of my friends, with talking about books, seeing everybody's pictures and like all the live shows and stuff. It's just made this week feel like really fun. This year I haven't really known how I want to spend my birthday and I feel like this readathon has made my birthday week feel special. And then my friend Jesse just made me feel even more special yesterday by sending me a book for my birthday. She sent me Heartstopper Volume 3 and also just like had the sweetest note to go with it. This is my favorite volume in the series and I just didn't have my own copy yet. In this one, Nick and Charlie go on a school trip. So you get to see them and their friend group kind of go on adventures. This is also the book where things start to get a little bit more serious and heavy. And I just feel like that added like an extra layer to the story and I just love it so much. This was just like the nicest little surprise yesterday. So Jesse, thank you so much for giving me one of my favorite books for my birthday. You're just the best and I am so excited to reread this. Also, this cover is just like so beautiful. I think the only other thing that I wanted to talk about in this clip was my hoodie that I'm wearing. It's my Harry's House hoodie from his concert that I went to a couple of weeks ago. And I felt like a hoodie was the perfect thing to wear for like self-care day, mostly because you can just do this and just get cozy, you know? <laughs> I should use this in my thumbnail. Anyway, that's it. And I'm going to start reading now. <laughs> I just really read a part in this where two of the characters are going to a coffee shop and one of the characters orders a drink, but it's actually like a code to the person that they're ordering the coffee from. And then like something secretive is going to happen. But even though the coffee order was a code, she still gets a drink. And so the main character, Zach, that's with her, says, what did you really order? And she said, it's basically an Earl Grey tea with soy milk and honey and vanilla. And I just feel like that sounds really good. I don't know if I've tried Earl Grey tea before, but I think um, part of my birthday plan for tomorrow is to go to Barnes and Noble. And so maybe when I'm there, I'll try Mirabelle's drink. As I've been reading this, I'm realizing that I don't remember literally anything from this book. I remember the premise 
and the vibes and I think the ending, but everything in between, like there are very few things that I remember, <laughs> especially like the stories within the story that we're reading from, like the stories from Sweet Sorrows and Fortunes and Fables. I'm reading one right now called The Story Sculptor. Literally have no memory of ever reading it before, <laughs> which honestly is kind of fitting for this book because the book itself feels very whimsical and dreamlike. And when I'm remembering this book, it feels like it was a dream kind of a thing. I don't feel too bad about not remembering these stories because you have the main plot with Zachary and then you have all of these little stories in between. So it's kind of a lot to keep track of. So I don't feel too bad. But anyway, I love the short stories. And so it's kind of fun that I'm being able to kind of like read them for the first time a little bit since I literally cannot remember them. <laughs> I just love this book so much. This reread has been so great, even though it's been taking me forever <laughs> to get through it. I like that I've been able to just kind of like take my time with it. Right now I'm on page 187 and I'm pretty sure it's like a 500 page book and I'm a slow reader so this one might not get finished for a while. I would like to make it maybe halfway though by the end of today. I'm just checking in again to share a quote that I really like. This is from the same story, The Story Sculptor. It says, not all stories speak to all listeners, but all listeners can find a story that does somewhere, sometime, in one form or another. I think as book lovers, that quote will resonate with a lot of us. I haven't filmed very much today, but I just wanted to hop on really quick and say thank you so much to everybody who wished me a happy birthday today. I just felt so loved and so special. I like really didn't expect that many people to like do that. So thank you so much. I'm so grateful to have so many friends here. I wish that I could meet all of you in real life and hug all of you, <laughs> but just thank you so much for making me feel special today. I haven't read anything yet today. <laughs> Things have just been kind of busy and have just like flown by. Travis did take me book shopping though for part of my birthday. He already got me some Squishmallows a couple of weeks ago as birthday presents. And he paid for a lot of stuff on my trip to LA with my friend Rachel when we went to like Disneyland in the Harry Styles concert. So I told him that he could only get me one book. <laughs> so I got this one. It's Cold Clay, it's Shady Hollow number two. This cover is everything. I'm obsessed with it. The cashier was obsessed with it too. And I was like, listen, if you like cozy mysteries and you like fantastic Mr. Fox, you need to read this. This one is set during the fall. So I'm like, do I wait for the fall to read it or do I pick it up now? I don't know. <laughs> Other than book shopping, Travis also surprised me with breakfast from one of my favorite places this morning. I took the picture for today, which turned out like this. I was having a hard time coming up with another place to take pictures. I didn't want everything this week to just be like a flat lay. So I decided to go with my bookshelf for today. Travis is about to get home from teaching a lab at the university. And on the way home, he's picking up dinner. I requested Japanese food from my favorite restaurant. I'm so excited to eat. I am so hungry. I always get the hibachi chicken with noodles and onion soup and it is so good. And then if I'm wanting like a little treat after, I might make him go get crumble with me. They honestly have kind of like bad flavors this week though. Obviously they didn't get the memo to have Biscoff lava cookie on the menu for my birthday. Rude. We usually watch something when we're eating dinner. So I think that I might want to watch um, a Studio Ghibli movie. I don't know which one though. I don't know if I'll end up reading anything tonight. If I do, I think it will probably be the poetry collection because I kind of just realized that tomorrow's the last day <laughs> and I've only finished one book. So the poetry collection is my best shot at reading two things this week. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm going to start reading some of it um, right now before Travis gets home. I wanted to do just a quick little update. Um, I did start the poetry collection. I actually started it last night 
and I just read a few more pages. I'm on page 39 and there are 160 pages so I'm 24% of the way through. Just like most poetry collections there are like sections in the book. So this first section I'm pretty sure was called Cosmos. So all of the poems are kind of based around like the universe and the stars and the moon, all of that kind of stuff, which is definitely some of my favorite imagery and stuff. The poem that I read from Nikita Gill like years ago and made me want to read this collection was in this section. So it was nice to read it again. But honestly, I'm not like super impressed. That poem that I've already read is my favorite poem that I've read in the collection so far. So it's kind of like there's not a new favorite or anything coming out of this so far. There are a couple of other things that I've liked though. I liked the poem 13 Billion Year Old Atoms. I liked the last section especially. It says, our bodies were made to house oceans of galaxies and our souls are rivers that have flowed through centuries. And then the poem that I was already familiar with is called 93% Stardust. Also, my cats are crunching in the background, so we have some ambiance. <laughs> it says, we have calcium in our bones, iron in our veins, carbon in our souls, and nitrogen in our brains. 93% Stardust with souls made of flames. We are all just stars that have people names. I just think it flows really well and it's cute and kind of funny almost. And I like that, that we're all kind of like part of the universe and the earth, like all that kind of stuff. There's also one other section that I liked. I took a picture of it though. I don't remember which poem it was from, but it's from page 27. It's the last line of the poem though. And it says, that is how I would like to remember you as something too wild for me to keep rather than a thing that threw the sun away. And I feel like as far as like relationships and stuff, that is very relatable, sadly. <laughs> Probably for a lot of us. So anyway, I'm like having a good time. It's a quick read, but honestly, this collection just kind of feels like really repetitive and also very surface level. When I read poetry, I kind of like to not really understand what it means until I'm kind of forced to like dissect things and figure out metaphors and like, I don't know, like all that kind of stuff. That's why I like Taylor Swift music so much is because like she's writing poetry basically. And depending on like the way that she writes the lyric, could mean something different. And also like if you know the context of like what was going on in her life when she was writing that song, you know other things too. And so far I just feel like what you read is what you get with this collection and it just kind of feels like I'm reading the same thing over and over again almost. The same words are being used, the same imagery is being used, almost to the point where I feel like I'm zoning out a little bit. And I feel bad saying that because I feel like poetry collections are like so personal, so I don't know. It's not to the point where I feel like I'm gonna DNF it or anything like that, just in case there is another gem in there, like 93% Stardust. But like, isn't that just the cutest thing? Like, we're all just stars that have people names. Adorable. I feel like the last line of these poems are like my favorite. This is from the poem Questions About a Love That Was. And it says, how do you go back to being strangers with someone who has seen your soul? Damn. The readathon ended yesterday and I did not film a single thing. <laughs> yesterday morning, I hopped on Rachel Sprints. Her channel is Happy Go Lovely Reads. She's Happy Go Lovely Sleeves on Instagram. Every single Wednesday, she does like productivity sprints. And so I just read a little bit during those. It was super fun. I love Rachel. Also during the live, she let me know that um, an Amazon package came for me from her. And it was this. I'm literally over the moon so happy about this. I'm so happy that I got to like open this with Rachel too. It was really fun. So Jessie got me volume three, Rachel got me volume four, and now we just need volume five to come out. <laughs> I love though that for my birthday, people got me like the rest of the series and it's one of my favorite graphic novel series ever. So this just made me so happy to finally have a copy. So thank you so much, Rachel. You're literally the best. I am so excited about this. And then also when I was picking up that package, um, there was also another book package. This book is from my sweet friend, Heather on Instagram. Her handle is Heather's Hondana, I'm pretty sure. That's the first time I've ever said it out loud, I think. And now I'm worried that I am not saying it right. But she got me this absolutely beautiful edition of Alice in Wonderland. 
I want to say these are called Wordsworth editions. It also has all of the like original illustrations in it. It is just so beautiful. I cannot wait to take pictures of this book for Instagram. And I also haven't ever read this one, so I'm excited to read a classic. So that was like the best surprise yesterday to get those books from my friends. Yesterday, I also finished Your Soul is a River by Nikita Gill. I decided to give this two stars, and I usually wouldn't rate a poetry collection because it kind of feels like nonfiction, like people have put a lot of themselves into it, so it doesn't really feel fair to rate it. But it just like really, in my opinion, was not a good poetry collection. It just felt so repetitive. I'm pretty sure that I already said that. It almost kind of felt like if you told an AI to write a poetry collection based around like celestial elements, elements of nature, like fire, smoke, all that kind of stuff, stars, moons, the ocean. And then you also told it to make it about like self-love, toxic relationships, and then to throw in like a dash of Tumblr, you know? That's what it felt like. It was just very surface level, like everything that you read was what you got. There were definitely some good messages and good themes throughout it, but it was just very like in your face, very obvious. And I also didn't find any poems that I liked better than the poem that I had already read from this collection before I read the collection, which I'm pretty sure is called 93% Stardust. I'm pretty sure that I've said literally all of this in a previous clip and I just forgot. I would say to skip this one unless you're already a fan of Nikita Gill. It wasn't like a total loss to read this though. Like it was a quick, easy, fast read and there were some really pretty parts of this that I liked. And I love that poem 93% Stardust. So it wasn't all bad, but it wasn't great either. <laughs> And then I also read more of The Starless Sea yesterday. I made it to page 311. So I'm that far through. I have about 200 pages left. I also have to show you the bookmark that my parents got me for my birthday. It's a little black cat. And they actually sent me like a ton of them. There are ones that look different than this that like go over the top of the page. They're in different positions and stuff, but they know me very well. I am very biased towards black cats. They're just the cutest. So I decided to use it in my Starless Sea reread. It's also very fitting because there are lots of cats in the Starless Sea. <laughs> right now in the book, something big and bad is about to happen, I think. I literally have forgotten like 80% of this book. Pretty sure I've already said that too. But this is basically like reading it again for the first time. <laughs> I love this time though, um, that I've been paying more attention to the signs of like the romance kind of budding between Zachary and another character. I think that when I was listening to it the first time back in 2020 on audio, I just didn't pay as much of attention to those parts. So I'm having a lot of fun this time kind of catching on to like the lingering stares and the accidental hand touches and stuff like that. I'm still just really loving this. I feel like everybody is like, you're still reading that book, but <laughs> I'm just a slow reader. And it's been really nice just to take my time with this because I do just love it so much. It's still holding up for me, which I'm so happy about because that's always a little bit nerve wracking to reread a favorite because there's always a chance that the second time could ruin it for you. So altogether for the readathon, I read two books, X's and O's and Your Soul is a River. I gave X's and O's three stars and then Poetry Collection two stars. Last night we also had the live show discussion for X's and O's and it was so much fun. Jesse had really awesome questions for us and it felt like it was equal parts just like fun and we were laughing and just having a good time and then there was also like half of it where we were talking about like kind of more serious topics and things like that so i felt like it was a really well balanced um live show since i didn't film anything yesterday i wanted to kind of like maybe make up for it today and do some fun things so i went thrifting today but i wanted to show you what i got really quick you guys all know by now that i need more lamps for my house so i got this little tiny one to go in the office i think is where i'm gonna put it and then i got this little like sweater cardigan thing it has some kind of like not bell sleeves but like some like little loose sleeves it's cropped and it has just like a little tie kind of up towards the top that you fasten it at i thought this could be cute to put over like dresses or something like that this thing i'm so excited about it's a fossil brand leather crossbody bag that i got for ten dollars when it was normally probably like over a hundred dollars. I love the brand Fossil, but they're always just too expensive for me to like purchase brand new. It's the perfect size to like fit your wallet in and stuff. I'm pretty sure it'll fit my Kindle too. Literally perfect. <laughs> this is actually my second Fossil bag that I found. I found one back when I was in high school and I got it for $2, which is just insane. And then I also got this cool like wall sconce thing. It's a mirror and then it has this little candlestick holder part. <laughs> I thought this looked really cool and kind of like vintage-y and I just think it would look really cool in my house somewhere. And then I have two more things. This one is, I think it's like a king size 
like flat sheet. Tell me this is not the most like me fabric that you've ever seen though. <laughs> we like to make blanket forts and stuff. So I thought this could be kind of fun to make a cute blanket fort out of, or I can cut it up and use it in like some kind of crafting project. Maybe try to make a book sleeve, <laughs> even though it looks impossible to me. And then this last thing is kind of big. <laughs> it's this quilt and it's very like cottage core, has little woodland creatures on it. I don't know what size it is. It says that it's 90 inches by 100 inches. So that might be like a queen size quilt. I'm not sure. I thought it was so pretty. It's really soft for a quilt. Sometimes quilts can be like scratchy and stuff, you know? So I feel like it was a really fun, successful thrifting day. And then I also came home to a couple of packages and I'm guessing that they're probably like birthday packages. So I thought I would open them really quick. I'll do this one first. Oh my gosh. My friend Gabby from Gabbing About Books Got me the Priory of the Orange Tree. Look how freaking chunky this is. Oh, such a sweet note. Gabby, you're the best. Thank you so much. Fun fact, I actually had a hardcover copy of this. And then for some stupid reason, I unhauled it like a couple years ago. And then my friend Megan from the Ginger Hobbit on Instagram read this and just like had amazing things to say about it. And so I decided to pick it up again. So I'm so excited to read this. Thank you so much, Gabby. And then I have this one. Zoe! My friend Zoe from Zoe Delaney got me And Yet, which is a book of poetry, which the cover is like so Zoe's aesthetic. And she got me Spells for Forgetting, which my friend Elizabeth from Ponytails and Paperbacks read and loved, so I'm so excited to pick it up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about these. Zoe, you're just the sweetest and your note is also just the sweetest thing ever. Thank you so much for sending me these. I never expect anyone to send me anything, but if you did, just it made my day. Thank you so much. I literally just felt so special on my birthday and stuff and just this whole entire week. I also really quick wanted to show the book that my cousin Allie got me. It's the third book in the Bridge Kingdom series and it's called The Inadequate Heir. I'm so excited to continue in this series and she's the one who like got me to start reading it. So I was so happy when she gave me the third book. She also got me treats and things for a bubble bath, which are literally my favorite things. <laughs> and then her sister, my cousin Sydney, came by yesterday and dropped off a little birthday package too. I already wore these, so they're kind of like stretched out a little bit, but she got me these pink cat socks. I'm obsessed. <laughs> and she also got me treats and a Dutch Bros gift card. So I don't know if either of them are watching, but I love you guys so much and thank you. You know me very well. <laughs> anyway though, I think that's pretty much everything. <laughs> this week has literally been the best. It was just so fun to have a readathon to participate in. I absolutely loved hosting. I loved my co-hosts. If you participated in the readathon this week, let me know in the comments what your favorite book that you read during the week was. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.